Today we're going to look at something that's very close to everyone's favorite trig identity. Well, before we look at our problem, let's recall what everyone's favorite trig identity is, which is, of course, the Pythagorean trig identity. That says that cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So now I'd like to look at the question, what if we, instead of having a square here, we have an arbitrary even power? And in fact, what we get is not an identity, but an inequality. And that is the goal of this video, which is to show for all real numbers theta, we have 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 is less than or equal to cosine to the 2n plus sine to the 2n, which is less than or equal to 1. And let's look our special case. We'll simplify down to the inequality which pins cosine squared plus sine squared between 1 and 1, which clearly just retrieves this identity, which we will use this identity during our um, calculation here. Okay, nice. So let's start with the right-hand portion of this inequality. So let's note that we know that 0 is less than or equal to cosine squared theta, which is less than or equal to 1, and 0 is less than or equal to sine squared theta, which is itself less than or equal to 1. And that's because cosine and sine are between negative 1 and 1. So when you square them, you get something between 0 and 1. But now, if you take something that's less than or equal to 1 and you raise it to the nth power, you get something smaller. Or at best, you get the same number, but that only occurs when you have 1. So that means if we raise cosine squared to the nth power, we'll get something that's smaller than or equal to cosine squared. So putting that together, we have cosine to the 2n theta is less than or equal to cosine squared theta. And likewise, sine to the 2n theta is less than or equal to sine squared theta. Okay, nice. But now we can take our kind of goal expression. So that is cosine to the 2n theta plus sine to the 2n theta. Combine these two inequalities together and we see that that is less than or equal to cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, which is itself equal to 1 by the Pythagorean trig identity. So looking at this stuff that I'm underlining in orange, you'll see that we have most definitely achieved the right-hand portion of this inequality. So now let's move on to the left-hand portion of this inequality, bounding this below. So let's start by setting x equal to cosine squared theta and we'll set y equal to sine squared theta. And notice that means that x plus y is equal to 1 or y is equal to 1 minus x. And now we can rephrase our goal over here in terms of this setup. So we now want to show that x to the n plus 1 minus x to the n is bigger than or equal to 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. So notice that this is x to the n plus y to the n, but that is cosine to the 2n plus sine to the 2n. So that would retrieve this left-hand side of our inequality. So in order to do that, we will consider a function and we'll consider the function defined by this expression. So I'll call it f of x, which is x to the n plus 1 minus x to the n power. And this is going to be on the interval from 0 to 1. And that's because the smallest value x could take here is 0, and the largest value is 1, just given that x is cosine theta. Okay, so now let's apply the extreme value theorem to this function. So the extreme value theorem says that we're guaranteed to achieve a maximum and a minimum on this interval. And furthermore, those maximum or minimum values must occur at the endpoints or the critical points. So we know the endpoints, those are clearly just 0 and 1, so we need to find the critical points, in other words, the place where the derivative is 0. 
So let's take the derivative of this, that's n times x to the n minus one minus n times one minus x to the n minus one. So setting this equal to zero, we will immediately achieve that we need x to be equal to one minus x, which means x equals one half. Great. And so that's just from adding this thing to both sides of the equation and then dividing by n and then taking an n minus one root, which isn't problematic because x is between zero and one here. Okay, so we get x equals a half. So that means we only need to check three values, x equals zero, x equals half, and x equals one in order to find maximums and minimums here. So let's see, x equals zero will give us f of zero, which in this case is one to the n, so that's one. And then x equals half will give us one over two to the n plus one over two to the n. But one over two to the n plus one over two to the n is one over two to the n minus one, just by adding those together and then canceling down. And then plugging in x equals one, we get f of x is also equal to one, or f of one is equal to one. So again, by the extreme value theorem, we know that we achieve a minimum value of this one over two to the n minus one, and a maximum value of one. So in other words, we know one over two to the n minus one is less than or equal to f of x, which is less than or equal to one, for all x on the interval zero to one. But now putting this back into our original variables, x and y, which is cosine squared and sine squared, we see that we have indeed achieved the left-hand side of this inequality. In fact, we've achieved both sides of this inequality. That being said, I think it's kind of nice to do the right-hand side of this inequality with this other method, just for a little bit of variety. So I've done some other problems on the channel where we derive kind of crazy trigonometric identities. There should be one on the screen right now if you'd like to check it out. And that's a good place to stop.